Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, you know, I, I, there's been something that has just been kind of bothering me about psychiatrists lately. And let's, let's get into this. First off, I want to preface this by saying I'm not attacking the psychiatrist profession, the, the profession of psychiatry. But two things have happened here really, really recently, and they've been very, they've been acutely notable because the participation of psychiatrists, I don't even want to put that in quotes, I, I'm sort of noting it, but the participation of psychiatrists has been integral to a couple of narratives recently that seem to be, for lack of a better term, adamantly proactive in trying to frustrate people's just sort of basic individual liberties. And what are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about so-called COVID, you know, the lockdowns, the insanity that went on with that. And then now the issue of cannabis here in Thailand. And in both instances, in both instances, psychiatrists were rolled out as the grand experts on everything associated with the the costs and the benefits associated with both of those issues. And what am I talking about here? Well, when they started rolling out lockdowns and masking, none of which worked, by the way, there's no evidence that it worked. Social distancing, which again, no evidence that does anything. It was all contrived. I, I wonder why, but let's leave that aside. Here in Thailand, for example, and I made the videos at the time where I said, why are a bunch of psychiatrists, the main spokesperson and most of the people that were on can't even remember what that body's called now, that were on the sort of the COVID task force, whatever, the nanny minder, big brother that wanted to tell us all what to do all the time. They were all psychiatrists. And I asked at the time, I was like, why are a bunch of psychiatrists talking to us about communicable disease? Where, where are the virologists? Where, where are the people that this is their specialty? I didn't really get any much of an answer to that. And then again, it's sort of one of those, I love that line, from the show The Americans, where the FBI agent, Agent Gad, uh, looks at Agent Beeman at one point, and they're talking about something during their investigation, and he says, coincidence is God winking at you. You know, so the first time with the COVID psychiatrist, I just sort of mentioned it in the moment and then sort of let it go. Then the cannabis thing came out, and they rolled out these psychiatrists who said, oh, psychiatric cases have exploded in Thailand since cannabis was legalized, which we know is not really accurate. I, I've done videos on that. I quoted source material. No, but they said 20 billion baht has, has been expended in, in funds on this explosion of psychiatric problems, which that number alone, I found to be, I just, I found incredible. You know, I did not, and, and I mean that in the true sense of the word, I did not find it credible because I remember doing the videos some years back where they were talking about the mandatory insurance policy associated with retirees and they were and I crunched the numbers at the time regarding retirees who passed away in Thailand without insurance and the cost to the Thai government and that cost came out to about a billion baht so 20 billion baht is is orders of magnitude higher than that I just can't believe that is what is going on in terms of in terms of this issue, in terms of the cannabis issue. And again, in that narrative, they started off saying it was killing people. There really wasn't any proof for that. So then they came around and said, oh, it's driving people crazy. There's an explosion of psychiatric cases, 20 billion baht. And again, it did not, that did not appear to be the case. And again, we've cited experts on that on this channel that have said, yeah, that's not really, that doesn't look to be the situation. So again, I, I come back to this whole thing of, you know, these psychiatrists, what do we, there's something about it that was bugging me. And, and finally, it, sort of the last piece of the jigsaw puzzle came into my head. Going over here to Twitter's, I saw it first on this person's, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the congressional record from congress.gov. On January 10th, 1963, Congressman Sid Herlong from Florida entered into the congressional record the 45 stated goals of the Communist Party. Interesting. Now, just entering something on the federal record, you know, again, though, this was like 100 years ago, so people actually, I think, acted in a lot more good faith when doing things like this. But, you know, take, you know, take it for what it's worth. 
okay? It, this isn't the end-all, be-all evidence of, you know, some I'm not claiming any kind of conspiracy. I don't think all psychiatrists are communists. In fact, far from it. That said, I think the Marxist movement, the communist movement, understood the power of psychiatry and for that reason exploited it or seeks to exploit it, maybe I should say. That said, quoting directly, dominate the psychiatric profession and use mental health laws as a means of gaining coercive control over those who oppose communist goals. Now, if you remember, if you know your history, and I've read a lot about Russia over the years. I've been to Russia. I, you know, people have sort of said I'm a Russophile, I'm like pro-Russian, I'm anti-American. I'm not. You know, I just don't think that Russia is this great evil that it's been made out to be, especially as of late in the Western press. But let's set that aside. I don't want to get into all of that. There, you know, any time in war, there's, you know, you have a hard time finding good guys. I, I'm, I'm not unaware of that fact. That said, I've been over there and I have read their history. And one of the things that under the Soviet system was very popular was to put people into sanatoriums, sanitariums you know, and, and put them under psychiatric care because, oh Lord, how could a sane person dislike the workers' utopia that was the Soviet Union? It was a very subtle and quite ingenious way of gaining, and I quote, coercive control over that population. And again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying there's a one-to-one -one relationship between communists and psychiatrists. That's not my point. I'm just simply saying that I've noticed where a narrative tends to pop up that would preclude liberty, I've seen now in two different scenarios where psychiatrists have been rolled out to legitimize it. And it's for this reason that from here on out, the hairs on the back of my neck are going to go up and I'm going to be acutely, you know, I'm going to acutely scrutinize anything that happens in any kind of public narrative, if you will, public policy discourse, where they roll out the psychiatrist as some sort of end-all, be-all experts at what should or should not be done.